On this episode of Maxim TV, we have David Meltzer on as a guest. David Meltzer is the co-founder of Sports One Marketing and formerly served as CEO of the renowned Lay Steinberg Sports and Entertainment Agency, which was the inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire. Considered one of the top esports entrepreneurs and investors, David is also a three-time international best-selling author, a top 100 business coach, and host of the top entrepreneur podcast, The Playbook. David is the executive producer of the Bloomberg and Amazon television series, Two Minute Drill, and also is the executive producer of Entrepreneur's number one digital business show, Elevator Pitch. David is featured in many books, movies, and TV shows, such as World's Greatest Motivators, Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy and Beyond the Secret, airing on Netflix. Additionally, he has been recognized by Variety Magazine as their Sports Humanitarian of the Year and awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. His life's mission is to empower over 1 billion people to be happy. This simple yet powerful mission has led him on an incredible journey to provide one thing, value. In all this content and communication, that's exactly what you'll receive. For the past 20 years, David has been providing free weekly trainings to empower others to empower others to be happy. Hope you enjoy the interview. Everybody, back to another great edition of Max and TV. I have a real honor and privilege of having David Meltzer on, a founder of Sports One Marketing. David, thank you so much for joining the show. Oh, thanks for having me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, this, this is a real unbelievable um, opportunity for myself. You're a top 100 business coach. I mean, I can go through the list. Hope of the top entrepreneurship podcast, The Playbook. I, I saw a lot of uh, your interviews, incredible interviews the executive producer of the two minute drill and it goes on it goes on from there but um what's really remarkable is that you come from a rags to riches story then went back to rags and then went back to riches i've heard a lot of stories from rags to riches and then back to rags but i have never heard of someone recover from that where does that drive come from really you know, there's a desire that I must be what I can be. And it started with something I'm not quantumly that good at, which is sports. Um, I had a dream to be a professional athlete. And through that journey, proved to myself that doing things every day consistently and without quit persistently in the pursuit of your best, to do your best, to learn something and have fun, that, you know, you will be able to enjoy it. And so... When I applied it to something I was good at, like making money or activity that you get paid for or, uh, you know, other things that aren't running fast or jumping high, <laughs> I started to realize, wow, the valuable lessons I learned through pursuing the wrong types of things, or I shouldn't say the wrong things, the things that I'm not quantumly uh, terrific at, uh, really set forth this desire that I must be what I can be. Wow. And so... Um... So you were the CEO, not you're the CEO of Samsung USA, which actually you uh, play the part in making the first phone ever, essentially. The um, first smartphone, yeah. So I was the CEO smartphone. of the first smartphone, cleverly called the PC e-phone. There we go. <laughs> it was a combination of a laptop and a telephone. It was a Windows. It was actually a Windows device, which you know to this day I'm still surprised uh, didn't make it. We had 1999, uh, the first Bluetooth big hefty convergence device they called them it's unbelievable it's unbelievable so um so you were the ceo of that you know obviously sports one marketing and then of lay steinberg sports agency so running businesses such as that how do you you know what's your number one lesson as being a ceo especially of such large corporations 
you got to be an intelligent follower. You have to be an intelligent follower of the people that work with you, for you, through you, and of course, the consumer. Uh, all the great leaders are intelligent followers. They're consistently learning from and seeing what people are listening for, not trying to see what or if they'll listen to them. And so being an intelligent follower was a superpower of being a leader and allowing a collective consciousness based off of values, compassionate capitalism, in order to effectuate a greater good, which isn't just making money, but helping people and having fun. Right, that's one of your core goals right there. And it, bef before then, you were actually um, a sales director for a number of organizations. And I think um, one thing that, you know, I, I don't think you can state enough is you're actually a lawyer by trade. You started off as a lawyer following in the Jewish tradition, of course, right? Um, and, but you became like a rock star salesperson, right? Correct? Yeah. So, you know, I had that Jewish mom, doctor, lawyer, failure. And uh, so I did go to law school. But when I graduated, I took a job in the internet in 1992, even though my mom, Jewish guilted me and told me the internet was a fad and I'd lose everything. Uh, I became a sales professional. I learned how to sell, to stimulate interest, transition interest, share vision, and most importantly, managing, develop that vision to a, a thriving opportunity. See, I sell through people, not to people. Uh, and I do that by articulating quantitative value to exceed what I'm asking for. And I still, to this day, 53 years old, and I run some of the biggest businesses in the world and coach some of the biggest CEOs in the world. And yet I still practice what I started in those five to thrive of stimulating interest, transitioning interest, sharing a vision, managing and develop a vision to thrive, to sell through people, not to them. That's very interesting. And um, so I, I'm also, uh, I'm also a uh, Jewish. So I, I, you know, they'd never allow me in law school for, I can't even spell lawyer, honestly. Um, <laughs> doctor, forget about it. I actually took a career assessment test and in the category of science, I actually came up in the negative. <laughs> um, entrepreneurship, I rank like 68 out of 70. So, um, I've essentially been in sales my entire life. So, but I've never managed people like yourself. You've managed thousands of people. So how, how do you manage people successfully? What's your biggest, what's your biggest take on that? Two things, teach value. So when I, uh, grasped onto gratitude that would help everyone work with me with seeking the light, the love and the lessons teaching forgiveness, uh, forgiving ourselves for making mistakes, hopefully not the same mistakes twice. Accountability is a big one. So many people live in liability, you know, coming from the law degree, that's very common, but liabilities, blame, shame, and justification. Instead, teaching people to live above the line and accountability. What did I do to uh, attract this to myself? And what am I supposed to learn from it? creates an effective communication atmosphere, one of inspiration, not just motivation that'll get you up, get you back up, get you started, get you back started, but living inspired in spirit through the greatest source of light, love and lessons through you to others with gratitude, forgiveness and accountability. And then I teach pragmatically five daily practices, knowing your what, knowing your who, knowing your how, knowing your now and applying your why. So between the four values of gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration, and the five daily practices, uh, I have been able to build some humongous teams and billions of dollars of revenue. And if anyone wants those and that information, you know, I will give it to you for free. I have my books, you know, ebook, audio book, I'll sign a book, send it to you, pay for shipping. Just email me, david at dmelter.com. And I will get you that stuff for free. Yeah. And I'll be leaving all of those links down below. Um, and uh, I do appreciate you sending this book, uh, your book, uh, Connected to Goodness. Um, when I was reading it, one of, the, one of the big takeaways from the book was the accountability part. And so you mentioned that you were, you know, at the point where you did go, where you did go bankrupt and your wife was wondering how you're going to pay your mortgage. But for you, you act, even though physically you were in the worst stage probably of your life, you mentally were in the best stage of your life. You took accountability for yourself. Do you feel accountability is really like the number one key to essentially living a purposeful life? It, it, you know, it's hard to rank things as number one, two, and three, but I will tell you that lessons are. And accountability is one of the key components along with gratitude of finding the light, the love, and the lessons. You see, pain, mistakes, failure, setbacks are all 
not stop signs, but turn signals. They're indicators. They indicate you have a better place to be, a better direction, a better situation, or make your situation better. But it's not better unless you find the solution, unless you find the lessons. You see, life is about lessons. The lessons will keep on coming until you learn them. The pain is the indicator that you have a lesson to learn. You see, you can use faith as an ultimate GPS that not only reroutes you to a better destination, but it actually makes your destination better. Uh, so it's a super GPS, unlike any other ever created. And so accountability is one of the key components to finding the light, finding the love, and most importantly, finding the lessons in everything that other people give judgments to. See, judgment is based off of a partial uh evidence it's based off of your senses which are weak your memory that's weaker so it's a partial type of evidentiary prospect that is based off of arrogance ignorance doubt and fear and so if we can go ahead and radically be radically humble and take accountability and just say to ourselves i don't know what i don't know but i'm going to learn from the situation to make myself better to make my situation better everything turns out all right 100 percent and so um, Warren Moon is someone that you have a very close relationship with uh, going back for years. He's your business partner in Sports One Marketing. Uh, I just want to just quote him. It was actually the forward to your book. And um, he talks about, you know, how you essentially operate um, pretty much your life. And so he, he's quoted as no matter how potentially stressful a situation would be, Dave never flinched or showed frustration. He simply worked that much harder all the while maintaining a positive attitude. That is very, very difficult to do. How in God's earth do you actually do that, though? Yeah, I'm a ferocious Buddha. So what that means is that I uh, have learned to identify what that stressful, anxious situation is. Identify the triggers, the people, the places, the things that cause me to move in the wrong direction. Uh, I call them ego-based consciousnesses. I identify when I have a need to be right. You know, if we could take all the time, money, emotion, and relationships that have been ruined by the need to be right, we could make billions of dollars together. If we took the need to be offended, that's one of my biggest triggers to my ego. And what happens when, when you get into ego-based consciousness, you see the primal fears of the ego take over, which means that the blood leaves our brain and goes to our body so we can fight, flee, feed, or the other F word that Gary Vee uses a lot. If <laughs> that blood goes away from our brain, that makes it very difficult to use our higher power of thinking, our higher self, our, our better self. And so what I've learned to do is to identify those ego-based consciousness, those triggers of the need to be right and offended and separate and anxious, frustrated, even guilty, resentful, uh, angry, all of these things, what they do is they set us in the wrong trajectory, creating voids, shortages, and obstacles in our lives. Instead, what I've learned to do is when I identify that I'm in ego-based consciousness, when I identify that I am in fear, when I identify that I have a need to be guilty or offended or resentful, I simply stop. I breathe. I'm that ferocious Buddha. And if anyone's been in an argument, especially with their spouse, and they're capable in the middle of the argument of stopping, and just breathing, getting back to a logical sense, putting the blood back into the brain, uh, they know that they are ferocious. But then you need to be a Buddha by getting to center, to getting to your higher self and rolling in the right trajectory. The line that I use is one that my mom taught me about fire, right? If you catch on fire, you need to stop, drop, and roll. Well, when you're in these ego-based consciousness, when you are triggered, then you realize your mind, your body, and soul are on fire. So stop, drop, and roll. Right. I, I was actually just watching a, um, it was a little show on a 767 plane that literally lost both engines, literally in the sky. And they were the first ones to actually land it successfully. And nobody, you know, nobody died. Everything was great. And uh, one of the people on the plane that he was interviewed, and he said that when it actually happened, uh, he mentioned that, you know, he was kind of going through his life in his head and like very quickly and saying, um, all the little arguments aren't real. You know, why did I make such a big deal about it? Right. It sounds it sounds like, you know, taking what you're saying can really I mean, can really turn 
everything around for somebody. Yeah, it's a complete paradigm shift. You know, if you're able to stop, drop, and roll, you start to not only identify the triggers, but like the person that's going down in an airplane, you start identifying the void shortages and obstacles. You start identifying, wow, I have been focusing in on what I don't want, what's missing. I've been focusing in on what other people want for me. If I just would have gotten out of my own way, put the blood back in my brain and focused in on what I did want for myself, the superpowers in other people's, carried gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability with me, utilizing the five daily practices, I could have been much more productive, much more accessible, and much more gracious with my life. And so many people live in that interference because what happens is they think they have to go out and get happy. They think they have to go out and get healthy. They have to go out and get wealthy, be worthy, not me. I know I am healthy, wealthy, and and worthy. I know that I have to figure out what's interfering with it. See, shifting the paradigm to understand what I truly am and what I'm connected to and through, that great source of light, love, and lessons, a source that gives us enough power in our pinky, enough power in our pinky to light up all of Manhattan, and we're interfering with it. And so I spend the majority of my time looking and seeking how do I clear that interference And I spend minutes and moments in ego-based consciousness and the interference compared to days, weeks, months, and years. And that's how you go from rags to riches twice twice in your life. Right. I I, still I I don't know anyone who's actually done that before. You're the only you're the only one I know of. I'll tell you one other, and it's a great person to follow. Carl Fisher. If you've heard of Fisher Island in Miami. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So Carl Fisher was Florida, actually. Yeah. So he's the richest man on earth three different times and went bankrupt twice in between. He created the Indy 500, the Holland and Lincoln freeways, Montauk, uh, you know, the Long Island, he South Beach. Uh, this guy was an extraordinary uh, example of living to your fullest potential and being willing to risk everything in order to get there. And, you know, it's so nice. I think P.T. Barnum may be another, if you ever see the movie Greatest Showman. Uh, so there's been a few for me, mentors, uh, when I went back to the rags of my life, uh, I sought people that and read about people that sit in a situation that I want to be in because the easiest way to get to where I want to be is ask someone who's already there for directions. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And so I actually write that in uh, my description of my own show. If you want to be good at something, ask someone who has been great at it. It's it sounds it sounds very simple and you know, but most people don't ask. Really. Yeah. Well, you just nailed, you know, the most common question people ask me is what will you tell your 18 year old self or 20 year old? It's always the same, whether it's 18, 28, 38 or 48. I'm 53 right now. And I still tell myself the same thing. Ask for help. Notice in my know your what there's also know your who. Once you know your what, go find out who can help you or who you can help. It's that simple. Radical humility comes from the experience of knowing you don't know. Radical humility come from the experience of knowing that you're allowed to change, that you're allowed to learn, you're allowed to grow. You can accelerate who you are and what you want if you have the who's to help you. So go out, find someone that sits in the situation that you want to be in, as you said, and ask for help in person, on the phone, via email and media, traditional and social media. Ask. You can't ask big enough. You can't ask often enough. Ask, 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 ask. 100%. And so going back to those, going back to those rough days, I would say when it went, um, you were at like the, you know, from the outside, it looked like you were at the top, everything, money, wealth, everything. Uh, you were coming home from the Emmy Awards one day with rapper Lil John, completely drunk. And um, your wife, your wife was not too happy at the time, I guess. It, it changed my life. You know, my wife, uh, I had no idea because I thought money about love and happiness. And I could imagine with all the money that we had that there wasn't plenty of love and happiness. But uh, she is a much wiser uh, person than me and pointed out that I wasn't paying attention to my family or my job. And I was partying way too much. In fact, she was unhappy and was going to leave me because I uh, wasn't paying attention to these things. And she felt as if I was going to end up in a really bad place if I didn't take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. It took me about 24 hours before I realized when I saw a jacket my father had given me six years previous on my 30th birthday with no pockets, one in which he, uh, when I received it, I got mad at him because he told me I was just like him 
And I said, I'm nothing like you. You're a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, an overseller, and a back end seller. I hate you. How dare you give me this jacket and try to teach me a lesson? Who are you? Well, meanwhile, I needed that lesson. And that lesson came to me the next morning when I woke up and I realized that I didn't hate my father. I definitely didn't hate my wife. I hated myself. I was the one that was a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, overseller, back end seller. I was the one who needed to take stock in who I was to live with gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration. And so from that day, I started to work the practice. I started the process of enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential by living with gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration, and effectuating over the last 16 years, those five daily practices of knowing my what, who, how, now, and applying my why. So, um, you know, cut, we're ending off uh, kind of on a lighter note. Um, a lot of people always are looking for dating advice. I know this is kind of random, but I mean, someone who really knows how to date, it's you. I mean, very romantically to get attention from your now wife, uh, I believe you started throwing rocks at her. Is that correct? Initially, I started with an egg. I hit her in the back of the head with an egg. There you uh, go. I was, a, I, I was right after sixth grade camp when I had my best friend, Rob, ask her to go study for me. And she said, no, tell me to ask him my, himself. And then he yelled in front of a, everyone, dude, she said no. So I got embarrassed and I loved her and adored her and as any 12 year old would. And so I threw an egg at her. And then later on in seventh grade, started throwing rocks at her. Uh, but eventually by 26 years old, I uh, established and let the universe allow her to bump into me. And uh, I re-engineered her vision of me and hopefully uh, have over, you know, now, you know, 27 years with dating and 23 years of marriage, <laughs> a lot, a lot, allowed her to see. Uh, but I will tell you this about my wife there. I am uh, a better person and uh, there's no better choice or decision I've ever made in my life. And I made it in the fourth grade when she skateboarded by my house. Uh, she didn't, allow me to, to do anything until we were 27, but about it. But finally, uh, that was the best decision of my life to date her and to marry her. Definitely. Um, you know, the lesson you can take from there is that girls, you got to allow, you know, somebody in because you don't want to have to throw rocks at her, right? <laughs> exactly. You got to say yes. And, uh, and that definitely, and I think it's been fun. I have four children and someone, you know, is all always picking, you know, some girl or some boy, they're like, I, I hate that. You know, he, and I'm thinking to myself, you can marry that guy someday. Be careful. <laughs> That's hysterical. So, um, anyways, uh, David, I know you got to go. Uh, I really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, and if anyone wants to be in touch with David about, you know, his free training every week at 11 a.m., uh, on Fridays, uh, I will be leaving a description below and I'll also be leaving a description for everything else David is involved with. Um, David, I cannot stress enough how thankful I am for you coming on, taking the time and uh, real uh, honor and privilege for me. You got it. David at dmelzer.com. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Thank you so much for having me on. Have a great day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hi, this is David Meltzer and you're listening to Maxon TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe.